Welcome everyone, I'm Bakaba. Today we're going to be going over some D2R map reading tips and tricks. This will help you navigate through the game a little bit quicker and to get to some farm areas a little quicker as well. Just as a reminder, please click the like, subscribe, and notify icons to be notified of future videos. Also, if you enjoy this video and want to see similar types of content in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. I stream a couple days a week on Twitch. Link to my channel on that platform is in the description below. Okay, so starting off in Act 1. Make our way to the Cold Plains. Follow the path. Also, we have a river map here. And so we'll do a bit of a longer path. Follow the path. One direction will lead you to the den. The other path will lead you to the Cold Plains. Hit them out, hit the uh, waypoint. And off you go into the cold plains looking for the either burial grounds or stony field. This is going to be a stony field. Stony is always along one of the sides of the wall. With the Act 1 outdoor maps and Act 2 outdoor maps, there are maps are squares. The one direction will bring you to Stony Field. The other direction, which will bring you into a corner, will be the burial grounds. You can see this is relatively close to a corner. Here's your burial grounds. So, We'll head to the stony field. Rakanishu is always just off the path. Stones. You can see Rakanishu next to stones. Grab the waypoint along the way. That will take some wandering. And make your way to the underground passage. Underground passage is going to be straight of the entrance tile. Direction will be exit to Darkwood. As you can see, our tile is facing this direction, but we want to stick straight. If you hit a branch, you want to go towards the right hand side. Here's our dark wood coming up. Here's our dark wood. You can see the entrance into this tile is going straight this way. And here's our dark wood. If at this particular branch over here we, we cut left, we would have ended up at the level 2. So underground, head straight. If you come across a fork in the road, stick to the right. Dark wood, follow the path. If you come across a dark wood with a hole in the ground, the dark of the uh, black marsh exit will always be up and slightly to the right. We're just going to keep looking for the Follow the path, sometimes come across a tree, kill a tree, and Woodfest guy, get the book, save Kane. So, keep following the path to hit Black Marsh. Black Marsh, your tower is either going to be along one of the walls ish. Doesn't have to be right on the wall, can be off a little bit. Or along the close to this giant centerpiece. Those are typically the, the two most 
located spots either along the outer wall or close to that inner wall. Power, relatively simple. Pick to the left. As you can see, this tile is facing this way, so this would be straight. You want to stick to the left from here. And okay, that way, so we will head over here. Here is facing left of this tile direction. Here's your entrance. And here's your tile. So as you get higher in difficulty, the maps will get larger in scale. This being how it's going to have the largest map set right now. So, all the towers you just want to keep heading left. Again, left. Tower 5 is that map. You'll either be on this particular side, the left hand side, in the middle, or on the right. And that is tower. Pretty straightforward. So from tower, we'll be farming that for, for runes most of the time, as well as keys and hell. Next we'll head into the Timo Highland. And here's another power map. See, it's kind of by the exit, by the um, sidewall. Dark wood. Mo Highland is going to be towards the right. Up and towards the right will get you to the Monastery Gate. The other path will bring you to the Pit's excellent farming spot for gear and hell. So, in the Outer Cloister, there's three set maps. If you have a map like this with the big cross in the middle, and your waypoint is on the top right corner of it, your barracks are going to be on the straight. If you get a map with no cross and a water fountain in the middle and your waypoint is on this bottom left corner your barracks are going to be on the right hand side and vice versa and if you have no cross with a fountain and your barracks and your waypoint is on this bottom right corner your barracks are going to be towards the left as we have this cross with our waypoint our barracks are straight, and our jail level 1 is either going to be straight or to the left. If our barracks are, if our jail is straight, it means our Herodic Malice is going to be on the left. If our jail is to the left, our Malice is going to be straight. Let's see what we get. Looks like our jail is... Uh, left. Our jail is straight. The jail is left, which means looking for. And here's our mouse facing straight. This is a little bit of a wonky map where it kind of looks straightish. It happens, it's weird. But you can see the jail is on the left, the Herodic Malice longer tile piece is facing straight. 
So jail, level one and two are relatively simple. Go straight for jail level one. If you go left, you're gonna come across the waypoint. As you can see left from this entrance, here's your entrance tile facing this direction. If you head left, there's your waypoint. If you go straight from here, and this general up here somewhere will be your level two. Here you are, here's your level two. You can see your tile is facing straight from your entrance. Same thing with level two. You want to head straight of your entrance. And straight can be kind of a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. However, it can get you straight as far as possible. See? Straight. I'll actually bump up that vacancy. You can see the map a little bit easier. As you can see, straight bring you to your level three. And your level three is going to be left of your entrance. But because our entrance is facing this way, we want to head towards this left hand side. And as you can see, here's our entrance tile to the exit facing left of the stairs coming down. Brings you to inner cloister. Inner Cloister and Cathedral, both set maps. Always the same. Catacomb levels 1 and 3 are, for the most part, random. Just have to wander around looking for level 2 and level 4. Typically, the ex exits are in a corner somewhere. More often than not. Sometimes you'll get one where it's kind of smack dab in the middle of the map. So level two, if you go clockwise, should come across the level three. Sorry, clock. Counterclockwise will bring you to your cat level 2. Clockwise typically will bring you to your level 3 and exit first. If you have the waypoint, the exit is always facing right of your waypoint. So we want to be looking for a tile that's going in this particular direction because our exit and the waypoint is going downward. And just like that, as you can see, right of your waypoint is going to be your level 3 exit or entrance. Level 3 is random, so just kind of run around, wander around, teleport around, hope for the best. It can get a little annoying and frustrating when you are looking for these exits. But typically your exit tiles in general look like this. Two paths going down. Sometimes it has a double door that's open. Sometimes it's just a single door, but it always has this general appearance. Cat 4 is a set map. the stuff in here if you'd like. Jump in here. Kill Andy, get your loot. Get the quest and make your way to Act 2. 
So that is Act 1 in a nutshell. Moving on to Act 2. Similar to Act 1, with a little bit of a twist. For Radimit, you're more often than not going to want to go through this lower entrance over here. And nine times out of ten, your exit for level two will either be down here or up here. You're over here or up here. Level two, you want to go straight of your entrance tile, and that will bring you to level three. Keep heading straight. As you can see, this tile is facing straight, even though we had to kind of come down to the right. And there's our exit for level three. Level three, Radimit is always left of the entrance. You just want to keep on looking for tiles that go left, and that will bring you to Radimit. And here he is. So Radmit, get your book of skill. And then we'll start making our way outside of town to get the Roderick Cube. And other pieces. Go ahead, Luke. I'm tight. What's on? So your exits and the outdoor spaces are in corners. Similar to the Act 1 outdoor maps, the Outdoor 2 Act 2 outdoor maps are big squares, and your entrances are going to be in corners. in that bottom left corner. Nothing in the top left corner. Here's in the top right corner. Exit to the dry hills. Dry hills. Well, you want to wander around, look for the Halls of the Dead. Similar to the other one, your exits are also going to be in the top corner. You want to grab the waypoint along the way. Exits are always going to be in corners on these outdoor maps. Here's your exit. Loop around. Here's our halls. Halls of the dead. Go left. You want to try to be going left as much as possible, and just like that, you have your exit down to level two. Sometimes you'll have to go straight to go left, or right to go around. You want to be trying to head to the left. That's going to be at all levels of the halls. As you can see, going this direction will be straight, this direction will be left, this direction will be right, given the tile. Just like that, here's a level three. 
And once again, go left. Then just stick into the left hand side, going left. Here's the chest, directly chest with the cube in it. Grab your cube and off you go to make your way to the far oasis. Where you'll try to get the staff. here. Again, in a corner. Put the waypoint along the way. And you're going to want to look for the maggot lair. Which, its location is generally random, and because it's just a hole in the ground, it can be a bit of a pain in the neck to find. What a lot of people will do is they will actually push forward to Claw Viper and grab Claw Viper Temple and then double back to do the staff. Sometimes it's easier if you're a sorceress. Sometimes um, you're able to hit level 18 by that point. So just keep looking for the Maggot Lair Entrance. Here it is. For Maggot Lair, the idea is to go right of the entrance. So, here's your entrance facing this way. You want to go right. As much as you can. As you can see, here's our level 3, level 2 entrance. So just stick to the right as much as you can. Level 1 and level 2. Sometimes you will get a map where you have to go left. Then it will kind of pop down and around. Which are not as often. Typically you just want to stick to the right hand side. You'll hit the exit. For level 3, the idea is to go straight much as you can, keep going northward. And that will bring you to your chest with the staff, and this big group of folks. Grab your staff, and then start making your way to, towards the Lost City. the other maps, your exit is going to be in a corner. There it is in this corner over here. Then once again, you want to... This is a nice easy one, but your Valley of Snakes is also typically in a corner. Claw Viper. Similar to Halls of the Dead, you want to stick to the left. That will bring you down to level 2. And your claw level 2 is a set map. Angskin is very strong, lightning enchanted, so he's a lot of fun to deal with. Jump. Kill those guys, hit the altar, grab your amulet, and then go and see Drognan to go down into the palace. The harem and palace are set maps as well. Very straightforward. Harem, exit one, exit two. And then your way down to the next level is always straight. straight down this way or straight over there and vice versa. 
palace, then with the harem. Your exits down to the next level are always straight of the way you came in. Your waypoint is going to be in the middle-ish. Level 2, same thing. Go straight of the way you came. Level 3. It's going to be in the center. You are... Fire Eye is either in this room with the portal, an arcane, or he's in one of the adjacent rooms. Everyone's favorite, 25% map. Arcane can be in any one of the four directions. There's no indicators as to what direction is the correct way from the waypoint. So typically you have a couple different layouts. So you have the portals on one end. You have flat on the other. You have stairs. The opposite of stairs you have windy. We'll try the windy way first. What you want to do for all these is to stick to one side, go as far as straight as you can. And your summoner map, summoner tile always looks like this. You'll see the book up and down. Go kill the summoner. Tap the journal. Go to arcane. Go to canyon. And then your canyon is also a set map. Starting at the top left and working your way around. You have circle, moon, square. In the corner you have the sun. And coming down you have double down arrow, triangle, and then sun over moon or sun under moon. A little trick to arcane if you've already completed the quest. Whatever symbol is missing is the symbol of the true tomb with Duriel. So the symbol that is missing here is sun over moon. So if we go to the sun over moon, it's going to be in this kind of bottom him over here. Sun over moon, sun under moon. And with Tarash's tomb, similar to all the other tombs, you want to stick to the left hand side. As you can see, going left, we hit dead end and no further ways left. Next way that you would go is straight. And just keep looking for ways to go left. To indicate that you went the right ways, you'll see this little zigzag tile. And that will bring you to your orifice. Pop your staff in there. And then you'll hit Daryl. It'll bring you to Daryl after you kill him. You go see Drognan, uh, Drognan, um, Jaren, and make your way towards Act Three. other thing going to the tombs um, especially for leveling for all the non-true tombs false tombs if you will when you head left it will bring you to a boss group and a sparkly chest for all the other tombs be right back
All right, so moving into Act 3, it's a very, very different type of layout compared to Acts 1 and 2. So Act 3 is going to use essentially 2x6 blocks with one block, one section being your Spider Forest, one being your Great Marsh, and one being your Flare Dungeon, uh, Flare Jungle. So typically, if this is Spider Forest over here, your exits to Great Marsh or Flare uh, Jungle are going to be either on the one, sorry, the three, five, or six blocks. So three, five, and six will be where the river jets out to one side or the other, and that will bring you to the next zone. What can get interesting is from Spider Forest, you can sometimes get a skip directly to Flare Jungle without having to go through the Great Marsh. So you can have maps that look like this. Spider Um, Great Marsh, and then Flare, all coming off the threes. You can have it like that, this, like this, or you can have a map like this is Flare over here, my cursor. You can have it both going off the same tile, coming like this. Or like that. Or you can have them all stacked on top of each other. That's less common. But it does happen. Skips are very nice. That is, in general, pack 3. To give an idea of what it looks like. through but each time you see kind of these little islands is going to be into the next tile so here's your arachnid layer with the waypoint for spider forest and in each zone you'll have well, the main zones, um, you'll have your waypoint on one of these little side blocks. And you'll have your, in this case, spider cavern. And another one, the other one will be blank. So this will be this number two. This is the number three tile over here. As you can see, we'll go left, or we'll head the fall of the river. That brings us to the Great Marsh. We have a Great Marsh on the number three tile, number three block. And right here is our number four block, which will bring us to another pygmy village. And here is our spider cavern. We'll follow the river some more to see if we get a skip on the number 5 block. Thing on the number 5 block, so we're working our way to number 6. And we have a skip on our number 6 block. So, there we are. Lucky skip. Once again, just want to continue to follow in the river. Looking for your pygmy villages. Killing stuff along the way. And here's your pygmy village over here. And this one looks like it has blank. 
So the other two pygmy villages will either have the waypoint or the flare dungeon. Here's the next village. Here's our waypoint. Means if we continue following this. Here's our Gidbin. The player dungeon. Player dungeon. The idea is similar to the other maps. Stick to the left. Left will bring you to the exits. See, go left. Same thing with level two. Pick the left. That will bring you to your exit. Level three. Level three has ten different map layouts. So just to kind of give an idea, if you have this particular layout, give your they want to go straight. So if you have the bottom right, uh, bottom left corner entrance, your sparkly chest with the brain is going to be in this top left corner. If you have a sorceress, you can just teleport through. If you have any other build, you're going to have to wander your way through. And unfortunately, all other ways to get through to this entrance over here involve going through the center of the map, which can be a very roundabout way. If you have a entrance that is in the middle-ish over here, like this, your sparkly chest is going to be up in the top corner again. There are some cases where your chest is in this bottom corner over here, as well as smack dab in the center or up in this top corner. So that just is a matter of going through and figuring things out, hoping for the best. So that's flare, uh, flare Dungeon. Biggest thing is, depending on where your entrance location is, typically it's going to be in one of the corners or smack dab in the middle of the map. There's 10 different variations of the level 3 map. i do a video on all 10 locations um, in the future. Once you gather the brain, you don't want to head towards Lower Kurast. From there, you're just going to want to keep following the river. It usually will bend. You'll get a, a bridge like this. A uh, broken raft will tell you that you're getting close. The broken raft. Go across the bridge, hit these three guys. And then you're in Lower Kurast. Lower Kurast. Once you hit Hell, is excellent for high rune farming. You can get up to a burr. Um, going to these chests by the campfires. So over here, you can see you have a campfire. You'll have three chests, two and one. Cut, one and the other, a weapon rack, and a armor stand. You can get up to two of these campfire sites in Lower Kurast. Um, you're better off farming LK in single player versus online. Just because you have a set map and it doesn't vary on you. So your entrance from Lower Kurast into Kurast Bazaar is either going to be in the bottom corner or the top corner. In whatever direction it is from lower Kurast, your exit to upper Kurast is going to be in the opposite corner. So bottom left entrance means top right exit. Now 
We do Serena in the Ruined Temple. The Ruined Temple in the Kuras Bazaar is always going to be in the temple where this entrance is facing Flare, Flare Jungle. Be your entrance. And from here, we'll do sewers. Sewers, the idea is to go clockwise again. And you'll either come across a sparkly chest first, or the exit. Or not the exit, the um, level 2 entrance. And if you come across the sparkly chest first, which we might... Okay, so here's your sparkly chest. Sparkly chest typically means that to the right of the chest, how the direction wise is going to be your level two entrance. As we've explored all that, we will check over here, and here it is. As you can see, this aisle is facing right of here. So this is going straight, this is going right. Level 2 is a set map. Go. Tell your monsters that are down here. Pop the chest. And grab your heart. If it gets easier to go back to an upper Kurast entrance. From upper Kurast, your bridge to Trav. The Kurast Bazaar is always in the center. On this back side. If people need experience, these temples are a phenomenal experience. Grab once again, set map. The waypoints could be on this top left side. Go kill your council. Hit the foil drop, hit the orb, make your way to level 1. Variance of Hate level 1, your exit to level 2 is always going to be left of the entrance. So our entrance is facing this direction, so we want to keep going left as much as possible. That will bring us to level 2. Sometimes you get one of these loop arounds, but as you can see, this is straight, this is left, left. Level 2, tiles facing this direction. So left of the level 2 entrance will be your waypoint. Here you go. And if you go left of your waypoint, which is the same as going straight of your entrance, will bring you to level 3. Sometimes it's a little bit of a, a wander to level 3. You need to be want to keep going straight of your entrance or left of your waypoint. You can see waypoint left. Help me. Entrance straight. Level three. Once again, set map. Go kill Mephisto. Pop this chest. Hope for a high rune if you're in hell. Make your way to Act 4.
Act 4, fun map. Your outdoor maps are once again squares. Your exit from outer steps into the Plains of Despair are going to be one of three locations. Either on this left bottom corner. Nothing over here. But will either be in the top left corner like it is now. Or it can be over here. There's your exits down to the Plains of Despair. Your Plains of Despair exit is going to be in the center of any one of the other three walls. Can randomly be over in this bottom area over here, but more than likely it's going to be along one of the middle of the side walls or straight ahead. Izzy spawns randomly, so it's just wandering around. Looking for it, as you can see, it's in the center of this particular left-hand wall. City of the Damned was a very lucky one, but usually your waypoint and stairs down are just a random location. and take some wandering. River of Flame. Just go, go right. Stick to the right as much as possible. And that will bring you to your level, your Chaos Sanctuary, your waypoint. You'll get these little cutoffs, which can bring you to your Malice or your Forge Quest. Always good to do your Forges. Again, a kicks right, you want to follow to the right. Then just by going right, you end up at the waypoint and Chaos Sanctuary. Chaos, once again, pretty straightforward set map. You have your seals and your seal bosses. Around. Up your seals, kill the seal bosses. Sometimes that seal gets stuck with Alkinesis, which is fun. seal bosses and pop all five seals. Diablo will spawn. Tell Diablo and make your way to Act 5. Just like that, you're in Act 5. Okay, once you get to Haragath, one thing to note is before you do your socket quest, Mala's potion prices are extremely high, so stock up on pots before you head to Act 5. Not here. To get from A to B over here, you just go straight. Quickly as you can, just go straight. You're going to want to kill Shank, grab the waypoint, and then make your way towards Crystalline Passage. Okay, kill Shank, the Overseer. Pick up your waypoint, Richard Highlands. Go turn in your socket quest. And then from here, you just want to see what particular direction. This map goes. So you can have your, your barb pens. 
usually in one of three layers. You have one in one group, sometimes two. As you can see in these little areas, you have a barb pin there. A little trick to tell you if you're going in the right direction. You'll see these portals. Whatever direction those are going in, that's the correct direction to make your way to the next level. Next area. Here's your next kind of barb pen area over here. Look around, nothing over here. Which means potentially in this third grouping, right here you'll have two. They can be like that, they can be all in a straight line. Save the barbs, get your runes for a Ancient's Pledge. Make your way towards the area plateau. Somewhere to every other area. You want to go straight. Usually, either bosses or those portals will tell you the right direction to go in. Just make your way to Crystalline Passage, which is right over here. The Crystalline Passage, your exits are going to be to the left of your entrances. If your entrance is facing this way, you could be looking for a tile that faces left. And your waypoint is going to be on a tile facing right, so this particular direction. Here's our waypoint. As you can see, it's facing right of the entrance. Your frozen river is going to be in a tile facing straight. There's your frozen river. We can go save Anya. Typically for Anya, just kind of follow the, uh... There's a couple set maps for Anya. Typically, you want to go left. Follow the planks. Keep going left. Over there. And here is Anya. This guy's usually mana burn. And call the mute. Go save Anya. Get your plus res. And continue on making your way towards Ancients. Alright, so we have Anya Street, which means our waypoint's to the left. Waypoint our exit. As you can see, in order to get over here, we had to go straight around to go up, up and left. Similar, your waypoint is going to be facing right. Your As you can see, this tile from here is facing the right of the entrance left of your entrance will be facing this direction your exit frozen tundra straight up the gut right up the middle that will bring you to your ancient way Once so again, like all the other ways, left is going to be towards your summit, and right is going to be facing your waypoint. As you can see, entrance left, and once again, right, which would be over here somewhere, would be your waypoint. Up to ancients, kill your ancients, be happy days, and make your way to Worldstone Keep. Worldstone Keep is similar to the Catacombs, where level 1 and 3 are random, and you can get a hint as towards the direction towards your level 3 entrance from the waypoint in level 2.
We're just gonna keep looking around for the entrance. We'll get this bridge. Red dots. Down. Level two. Here's our waypoint. So from our waypoint, we know we want to go right. As you can see, here's our waypoint up here. And this tile face is right of the waypoint. Level 3, once again random. We got lucky with a quick one this time, but it can be anywhere down here. And Throne is a set map. Put everything in it. Kill all the bail minions. Then make your way to bail, which once again is another closed set map. And that is... Diablo 2 map directions in a nutshell. Left and, left and straight are your best friends, predominantly. Right usually like these the waypoints. That's all she wrote for, for map directions. I've been on mute the whole time. That's embarrassing. <laughs> 